Welcome to my tutorials on karaoke building using Karaoke Builder Studio. A few points I would like to cover first of all is where one should start in uh, organizing to be prepared to have a successful uh, working of the program. I'm assuming at this point that you have already installed Karaoke Builder Studio. The first thing I would like to suggest is that you set up your project files under the Karaoke Builder Studio program folder, which should be installed on your C drive, not in your program files folders. Typically, this is the best location for Karaoke Builder Studio to be installed. That is installed by default to your C drive or your main hard drive on your internal computer, uh, internal hard drive. The uh, Karaoke Builder Studio folder will contain a f subfolders called FX, Help, Projects, uh, and um, Templates. I have added a few other folders as you can see in this picture, but your main folders when you install the program is FX, Help, Projects, and uh, Templates. The other files within that main Karaoke Builder Studio are uh, files which are required to run the program. Let's begin, first of all, by setting up our folders for projects. For this tutorial purpose, I have created a folder called Projects 2. Uh, you can uh, keep using the Projects folder that comes with the program when it is installed. For this tutorial, as I said, I created this other projects folder to uh, show you my recommended setting of uh, folders for projects. So in your project folder, you should have set it up with subfolders named according to the song that you're going to be working on. In this instance, I have chosen George Straits Down Louisiana Way for this tutorial. This is the main subfolder under Karaoke Projects folder. In this project folder, I have created three other subfolders. The first one is called Bins, which will contain your completed bin projects. Original files, which should contain all your original MP3 music files. And secondly, uh, thirdly, is the Working Files folder. Your Working Files folder should contain your WAV files, which would be uh, converted, the MP3s which have been converted to WAV file format. You will discover that Karaoke Builder Studio only works well when you're working with a WAV file format. So although you can begin to use the mp3s it will not create bin files unless the music files are in WAV format so to avoid any frustrations further it is advised that you convert your mp3s in your uh, original files folder to WAV files and move those WAV files converted into your working files folder the other file that you should have within your working files folder is your lyrics text. I use notepad to place my uh, lyrics text in. There are two methods by which you can create or have a lyrics text file and I'll show you the both ways within the program. So once again, the ideal situation is under your projects folder, create your main uh, song folder, such as George Strait down Louisiana Way, and within there, those three other subfolders, bins, original files, and working files. Now, once you have this set, it's time to begin by opening up the program itself. Um, I will begin a new project by clicking the new button. 
This now clears everything that I had previously loaded within the program. The first thing you want to do is to load your lyrics and that would be found by clicking this button here says loads lyrics from a text file. Clicking on load you would uh, browse to the folder typically your working files folder and select the lyrics text. Another way that one can go about this is if you don't have a text file you can uh, play back the music with the vocals and you can literally type in your lyrics within this area here. This is where your lyrics text will show when you begin this program. As an example I'm going to retype this line and uh, the second line now this is just to show you as an example uh, you can create your own text file within the program itself just as I was showing you you can type in the lyrics when you are creating your own lyrics text file once you have it all typed out you can save it by clicking the export button the export will save the lyrics as a text file by clicking there I'm saving it to exported text being prompted to overwrite what I already have and there is my text file so there again there are two ways you can either physically type it in and export it as a text file or you can load an existing text file that is for your lyrics now the next step is to load in your audio file by clicking audio towards the center button um, you can choose your audio file that you want to work with it is advisable to have a audio file that has the vocals in it which I refer to as the guide vocals file so loading up your guide vocals file into the program once again you must be using a wave file to begin with because it will not convert an mp3 file when you come to the final stages of your creation so once your audio file is selected your text file is imported the next setting will be your styles your styles are related to the template that you will load when it comes to templates there are several uh, options available to you you can use an existing karaoke builder studio template which uh, is the basic default a default and a few others that come with the program and uh, I will select one of them to show you what you can do with your templates as you'll see I've inst I've loaded up this one particular template that would came with karaoke builder studio this first setting here has to do with a default for your lyrics the other default is for the male part of any lyrics the third choice is for the female part of lyrics and other would be as an example if you're going to have a duet that you're working on you might use this other to um, color the lyrics where both singers are singing now each one of these defaults males females or others these colors can be changed as well as the screen background the screen border the 
main text color, the outline of that text, the color that is going to be used to wipe the text as it's, as it's playing or is being sung, and the outline to that wiping of the text. To show you how you can create your own uh, template, you can change the colors for each section. You can change the colors for default, the colors for male, the colors for female, lyrics, and colors for other. To change each one, you need to have each one obviously selected. As an example, with the default, I'm going to go with a black background. This bar here along the top with all these various uh, squares of different colors, these are what you would use to choose which color for each area. As an example, I'm going to change my screen to a black. All I need to do is to drag, select it, and click on it. There, I have my screen and my border now set as black. My text, I'm going to leave as white with a black outline. Now the text will be wiped in a different color. And I'm going to choose to change this color to a red as an example. By changing my color palette to red, I now simply slide that to the text wipe and it will automatically change the text wiping to the red. I prefer not to have an outline so I am going to change the outline wipe to black. There I have set my default lyrics colors. For my male singing and typically your default and your male will be the same. The other, as the other thing that should be set is your wipe text under this such setting here. I would set it to wipe text. Uh, the next thing to do is now to take your default because you may want to have your default and your mail to be the same. You would copy it to the mail. To change it back to the mail, just double click on there and type in mail. Now I have both the default and the mail settings exactly the same. The female settings I'm going to change now as well. I'm going to change the female settings to the white with a black outline. The wiping, I'm going to keep the same as I have on the male and it will be wiped to red and there will be a black outline. For other, I am going to change the text to a green The outline will be black. The text wiping, I'm going to maintain the same as in the others. And the outline wipe will be black. Once I have chosen all my colors, the next step is to choose the font. Whatever fonts you have installed on your system Karaoke Builder Studio will automatically import them and make them avail available for you to choose. In this instance, it has, def it has in the original template that I imported, it has it set to Arial. I can change anything uh, that I want for fonts. 
And uh, as an example, I, I've selected Arial. The size is now set at 14 and it is in bold. I can increase the size if I prefer and to see how difference it makes you click on the sample text on the left side and you will see it change as an example. The default is what you should start with. The male, each, each uh, lyric part can be adjusted for size. Now I have my text, wiping, colors, and font, and size of that, say, uh, created. Basically, now I have created a new template. So I will now save this template by clicking the Save button next to the template load. It will now prompt me for a name for this template and I will change it as, change it to, well in this instance, Tutorial. My fingers are not working. All right, now I will click save. And now this is saved and it could be brought up at any time. Uh, so once again, once you have your track, your basic track components, that being the lyrics and your audio file imported and inserted your styles are now set according to your template. The next one to concern yourself with is the settings. Your settings detail level can be either finest, which will give a better quality, but may cause problems with your using a fast track. I find that the good gives you a better overall quality of, of track Unless, of course, you are working on a very fast track, then you would select the fast wiping. Keep in mind that these detail levels are also going to be influencing your template so that when you have these chosen, your template will reflect these settings. That is the detail level. We are going to choose good level. As far as margins are concerned, they can also be adjusted. I prefer to have zero on the left, zero on the right, which allows me more room for my lyrics. The top I would have set at two for spacing and the bottom spacing, again, I would, have have, I would set to two. Now going back, I will save these as part of the to the template now the next set the next thing to, to go to will be the actual syncing of the lyrics to the music and i will cover that in the next part of this tutorial Welcome to part two of Karaoke Builder Studio tutorial. In our first part, we covered basic setup principles and uh, recommendations. We imported our lyrics file. We imported our audio file. We established our template for in the styles settings. And in other settings, we detailed good and we adjusted our margins. Back to the text file, which we originally created or we imported, there are still some things that need to be done 
before we continue on with the syncing of the music to the lyrics. As you will see in the lyrics on this left hand side in the white area, this first and second sentence all run together. We need to separate the lines and it's very simple to do. We will attempt to see what it views like looks like when we uh, separate the lines. You can do it in one of two methods either backspace and then hit the return key or drag your mouse till it fills that space and him simply hit your return key. The second line now is still a little on the long side because it goes off both the left and the right side of the page. So we need to create a third line of lyrics. So we will attempt to do it at this point. Now we have three separate lines of lyrics on the first page. The space which is here will is created by hitting your return key and creating a space which in effect creates the second page or the next page. And as an example, uh, we would do it again here. Hit your return key and create a space between your lyrics lines to create your individual pages of lyrics. Once you have done this to your lyrics file, the next step is to actually break up the words into their two syllable parts. Words like going are actually sung and or spoken in two uh, definite breaks. So in this example, goin, we are going to now separate into its two syllables, go and in. By inserting the forward slash, it will automatically break up that word. Goin and down, as you can see, are joined together. There is no visible space. So to create one, you simply hit your space key on your keyboard and it automatically creates the appropriate amount of space required. The word Louisiana should be broken up in this method because it has four parts. Lou, Ease, Eanna, You need to sound out the words so that you can get the proper breaks for each word. So Louisiana is how we have it broken. The next uh, going, we'll split that. Very, split it at that point. Worry, split it there. About, split it at the A because I'll be okay. Words like okay or numbers, some text uh, have a number or the number actually spelt out. Either way you may need to separate. Words like okay as an example, sometimes it's just O and K and sometimes as in this lyrics it has it fully spelled out O-K-A-Y. Either way is totally acceptable, especially if you are uh, needing extra space on your page for other lyrics. So to simply separate the O and the K, again, just put that forward slash in and it will break it up into its, till, into its two syllables. You need to go through all of your lyrics to do this before you do the syncing. Now that we have all of our words separated into their syllables and the lyrics broken up into separate pages, you'll notice that as I click on each lyric area for each page, that on the left hand side 
it adjusts down and indicates the page. As an example, uh, I'm sitting now in the area that holds the second page of lyrics and it's reflected on the left hand side as page two. Numbers one, two, three, and so on indicate the page that holds the lyrics. I can also see those lyrics by clicking on the left hand side and seeing what is showing and how it will show on each page. Now in the left hand area it will, will not show you your uh, split words but it will show you how it will line up on your individual pages. We'll be doing some further refining as to where uh, uh, adjusting the position of these lines of lyrics on the pages once we have done the syncing. So now to do the syncing. This is probably one area where people run into the most difficulty and there is nothing that can be done to teach one how to be syncopated. <laughs> uh, it will take some, some folks it will take some practice and others it will be uh, uh, snap. It has to do with rhythm and syncopation. However, to assist you in that area, once you are ready with your lyrics and your music is inserted, to do the next step in syncing, you simply click the sync lyrics with audio button. Now, you heard the music begin. The music, when it starts within the syncing panel, will start at 100%. In other words, it will be at its original uh, speed. In order to attain fine results when you're syncing, you may want to adjust the speed of the music being played as you go along. That can be done in a number of ways. You can choose the presets of 100%, speed it down to 75%, or lower the speed to 50%. The other option you have is to find it somewhere in between the 50 and 75%. And by clicking on the playback speed button area, as I'm showing here, you can adjust it to slow down to 83% of its original speed or a little further down. For this exercise we're going to stay at 75%. Now to begin the actual syncing we have our speed set. There are two methods by which you will synchronize the words with the singing of the music. You could either use your space bar on your keyboard or use this next word button. It is important to understand how this works. As the word is being sung, you would click the button, the next word button or the spacer bar and uh, go to the next word. I will give you a demonstration of that at this time. <laughs>
Now, I made a mistake, which is not serious because at this point I can still go back to the beginning of this page and correct my syncopation error. I will hit the back button and start again on this page. It will not take me back to the beginning unless I click the back button here to take me back one page at a time. I am not happy with the way that I was able to synchronize the words with the music on this page, so I'm going to hit the back button and you will hear the music restart at this point. Every day, don't worry 
I'm now being prompted for a KBP file name for this song. So what I will do is I will start to type in the name and all the other files that have a similar name that starts with what I just started typing will pop up. I can choose that. As an example, I'm going to choose George Strait with vocals down Louisiana Way, which is the name of the WAV file that I was using. I will eliminate the dot .WAV in the file name and then simply hit return. Now, what it has done, it has now saved this as a KBPS file, which is a project file. You can open this project file by simply clicking open. And it will be the first one showing. And now I have it saved and uh, ready to refine. So that is the syncing part. Uh, we will get into the next step of editing what we have created to this point. Keep in mind again that syncing is very critical and it will reduce the amount of fine editing time required later. This ends part two of my Karaoke Builder Studio tutorial. Welcome to part three of the Karaoke Builder Studio tutorial. In part one, we did some basic setup. In part two, we uh, defined our settings as regarding the settings for wiping our templates and the insertion of our uh, template, audio files, and lyric files. And we uh, finished the last tutorial, part two, by doing the basic uh, syncing of lyrics to music. At this stage, we are now set at where we can fine tune the uh, syncing of the lyrics. Before we continue on though, a couple of things that should be done before you enter the edit part of the program. As you will notice, now that we have done the syncing, the lyrics are showing as they would show on each page. It is a good idea now to center things for each page. Typically, based upon the settings that we now have with in the margins of nothing on the left, nothing on the right, a uh, position of two for the top and a position at the bottom of two, now's the time to adjust our lines so that they are centered on the pages. Using the template that we did with the margin settings, we now want to position these lines so they're centered. By taking your mouse, clicking the first line, holding down your uh, shift key, you can select all four lines. Uh, I have done this previously knowing the positions of uh, the pages and what I'm going to do is enter in down 32. Hit the return key and now it immediately adjusts each line to a centered position on the pages. I will go through each page and center these lines using the 32 as the setting for the positions. This page has four lines, so I will stay with the 32. And this page as well, holding down your shift key and left clicking your mouse to the last line, I adjust downwards by 32 points. Uh, the next page, same thing. You will go through each page and adjust its position on the pages. 
This will take a few moments. Now this page has five lines, so I need to decrease the amount of down spacing. So I'm going to half it. I'm going to set it at 16 from the 32 for four lines. This page has five, so I basically split it in half. Next page, it has only three lines, so I'm going to increase it by 16, which would take me to 48. Same thing with this three line page, I'm going to set it to 48. Then the next page has four lines, so it's our 32. Uh, this page has four lines, again 32. This page has, which is our last page, has 32 for a setting. Now this can be adjusted either by typing it in or by using the up or down arrows, depending on what you prefer and if you're not really satisfied with how it positions itself on the page you can make these adjustments once you have it where you believe it should be then you can continue on okay so that's how we adjust the lines for each page we will now go back to the first page by selecting on the left the first line do not check the sample text because that will not be a page in your synchronized file. So by clicking the first line of your first page of a synced file, now we will go to the edit portion. This edit module is where you do your fine tuning. The first thing that we want to do is You'll see there's two tabs, one called Lyric Sweeping, the second Display Remove. We're going to start with the Display Remove. We're going to select all. Up here, it will select ev each and every line on every page. And now we will go to Page Removal. You have your Display Removal settings here. And we will be coming back to these in a few moments. Your page display will be line by line, but your page removal, we want to clear the screen after each page has been played. You may want to stay with line by line. You may want to, for effect, have it fading or disappear in a circle. I find that clear screen or line by line are the two most favored and give you the best results in the final uh, project. So we're going to select clear screen for this exercise. Now we can click anywhere on the white space area here. And now every page is now set line by line and is set to clear the screen once everything is finished being shown. Here is another point and to remember. When you're looking at the display removal tab you'll notice that there is a gray area and then a orange colored area the gray area indicates the length of time that that line will show and the orange area will be the length of time that the wiping will occur during the display of that line to give you an example I am going to set it just before and down here at the bottom left corner is where you can actually play the file as it has been produced after our first initial syncing. By playing the file and by having the view button turned on, if as an example you do not have that on, it will not show. So all you need to do to view how it's going to show as you play it, just simply click this view button and it will show you as it plays, how it will show. So now let's play. Now immediately I noticed that the I is a little bit late. We will come back and adjust that yet. I am going down the ways 
Louisiana way. I'm going to take you to the end of this page to show you what happens and what you need to do to correct. I'm going back as of this very day. Don't worry. Now, you will notice that at this point, there is going to be some overlapping. Although it does not show in the view window, when you produce this file as a bin and then play it back, you will discover that these lines are overlapping as you can see here. Now, what do we do to clear that up? There is a couple of things that you can do. First of all, check to see if the word day, which is the last word on that page, ends properly. Day. It appears to be perfect. Now what we need to do is de decrease the amount of time that that line shows. So by Clicking on that line, you'll notice that it becomes viewed as selected. Clicking away from it, it unselects it. So by selecting it, now on the right-hand side, you'll see under Display Remove some other uh, settings. And these three sets of arrows will indicate where you can make the adjustment. This first pair of arrows it refers to the beginning of this grade line. You remember the grade line is an indication as to length of time that the line will show. What we want to adjust is the end of this line. So we will go to the last set of arrows and we will decrease the length of time that this line shows. I will click the left arrow on the third pair of arrows and you watch as it changes. Now I have sufficient space between the end of this page, the last lyric line, and the next page where the next lyric line will start, which will be this one. That is still a little tight, but in some fast-paced moving songs, you may need to live with that size of gap between the pages. You'll notice that this last line on the second page is sitting a little off from the rest. To select that and adjust it, again, select it, and this time it's the first pair of arrows that you're going to work at because it's the beginning of the show time of that great area. And you, each time you click it, it will move it slightly. That should make it line up with the other lines on that page. Now, as we continue along. Don't worry about me, cause I'll be okay. I'm going down the Louisiana way. Now, you'll notice that the page cleared after the last line was sung and after the period of time that was allowed for it to show. We can decrease the amount of time of blank screen between pages, again by adjusting the show length of the last line and or adjusting the show length of the first line of the next page. Here I will adjust the last line so that it will extend the show time to a certain point. Then I will go to my next page, the f all lines I'm going to need to move so that they are lined up. So to do that, you select the first line and then click your shift button, which will select all the lines on that page. Now to move them so that the show time begins earlier, all you need to do is click the first left button on the first set of two and you can see it as it moves. Now I have a space which allows for a very minimal amount of blank uh, show time on the file.
That's how you can adjust your lines. Okay, now that we've gone through the exercise of uh, ensuring our lines are equal and there's no overlapping, the other thing that can be done in this module for fine tuning is if some words are running in too late or not uh, or too soon, you can adjust that uh, period of wipe time. And that will be the influencing factor as to uh, the timing of the actual words or word being wiped. To do that, simply hit the line, Lyric Sweeping tab and it will change this module so it's showing you where the words actually show up uh, and the actual wiping of the words. This word here, San, Fran, which is part of San Francisco, it appears that it might be a little bit off. To find out, select just above it and then click play. San. And if you're sharp enough, you could hear that San actually starts at this point. Now, in order to select it, you click with your left mouse and slide your mouse up until you see that little arrow with the double bars below it. That indicates that you have selected the beginning of the wiping of that word. You can shift it down or up depending on what you need to do. That adjusts it so it's now on time. Now Fran comes in again too early. So we will left click on that area take our mouse until and move it until we see the little arrow with the two bars and we will adjust it downwards to the red line. The red line is like a marker indicating where the music actually is positioned and you can position your words to match the actual music. Continuing on. Francisco. Now we can see that now and then all seem to be a little bit out of sync. So what we can do is we can actually call select all three of those. Left click the first word, hold down your CRTL key on your keyboard to select the second, and you can select the third word. Now there's two options here. You can drag them all three at the same time. However, it shortens them. So in order to make quick adjustments, what you can do is select the first word and join it with the second word, then join it with the third word. Now I'm going to adjust it downwards so that it lines up with where it sh actually is being sung, which is about at this point. It could be a little bit further down, just as tad. Okay, now we will play it. And it sounds it begins at this point. So now I will go and I will re-break or split the words by putting in that forward slash. Then I click split. Now it splits it but I need to adjust this one, the word now, upwards, then take and, then, and move it upwards, so it's in the position of the proper swiping. And then begins at this point, so I will set my marker at this point, then I will split and, and then, in this area here, Shorten and and extend then. There, that's how you can adjust your wiping time for each word and or line. Now let's have a listen to the whole to the whole page. Can't think about you, San Francisco. 
as you can see and hear, it is much finer uh, synced. This is the final editing that would need to be done in your projects. And again, if you do the syncing as best as possible, it will reduce the amount of time that you will spend in this area. Now, going back to the display remove, let's just double check all of our lines and see where they are showing. And if we need to lengthen the length of the time that they are showing, we will. Now, I'm also going to remind you that as you go along, typically every page that you're making any adjustments to, you should save this project. So let's do that now. To save your project, I recommend using the Save As uh, button. It will take you to your Working Files folder for that song, which is where it should be. If not, ensure that you are saving your uh, project file to your Working Files folder. It is already showing there because that's where it was saved when we synced it. Now we're going to overwrite that with these changes we have made in the edit mode. And yes, we will overwrite it. All right, now we will continue. And as I said, I strongly suggest that each page that you make changes to, whether it's in the length of the lines or the length of the words, that you save as you go through each page. It only takes a few seconds to save it, but it can uh, save you a lot of grief later on. As you can see, this line here now will become overlapped as it goes along. This is not what we want to have happen, so we will make that correction now. Selecting the three lines, again, you hold your uh, left click down, then your control key, and you can select individual lines and then make their adjustments. In this case, we're going to move the front of the line further to the right. And this last line, we're going to line it up with the other three. There we go. We have a reasonable amount of space. I'm going to give it just a little tad more room. Then we continue on. We will save it as we go along. And uh, we could give this a bit more time to show, to show up on the next page. And we can give this last line of the previous page a bit more length of time to show. Again, we'll save this. There is a lot of saving that goes on as you go along. That's a little too long. I'd like to give this page a bit more. Again, how you do this is you select the last line and hit your shift key, or you can select the first line and individually select the following lines or other lines by holding your control key down. In this instance, we're just going to take all three lines, click on the last one, click our Shift key, all three are now selected, and then adjust them accordingly. This here, we're going to have an overlap beginning, and we can see as we click on the progress line here that these words are going to show, so we will make those adjustments. I hope you're not finding this too tedious, but it's necessary to do to end up with a good quality project at the end of it all. Again, we're going to select this page here, which could be given a bit more show time. Left click either the top or bottom line and hold your shift key down to select all of them. Now shift them all together. A bit more show time on the last line of the previous page 
reduce the amount of blank space between the pages. Makes for a nicer, cleaner looking translation transition as the song goes on. Okay, now we hear what I've done again is I've selected the first line, held down my control key and selected the second and the third line. I've left the fourth line where it is. I'll adjust it at the last once I have these positioned where I want them. Now I will select the last line and shift it in line. A little too far, so just one little click and that should line up all four lines on that page. Now, I did a little something different. This here may confuse you. But what I have done is I've created something that I call a progress line. In many songs, you'll have a instrumental break between uh, pages and within the song. This here is, was uh, typed into the text. And uh, I will cover this part later in my next part of the tutorial. For now, we will just finish off adjusting the lines and I'll show you how to add a progress bar and or a um, file which will indicate an instrumental break within your file. Again, and there we are. We're towards the end. We are at the end of the last page. So now that's how you do some final editing of your karaoke files. Uh, we will show you how to create and insert uh, instrumental breaks and uh, other slides for your project. Thank you for your attention. And uh, good luck to the, you on this part. We will continue with part four, as I mentioned, and cover some other unique little tips and tricks. Welcome back to uh, my Karaoke Builder Studio tutorials. We're going to continue now with part four, and we will show you a few more tips and tricks when creating a project. In our last tutorial, uh, there was a section on one page that had B and K. And as I explained to you, this was uh, a break for an instrumental. There are a number of ways that you can uh, create an instrumental break within your project. It would be one page, just like your lyrics is one page, you know, with the four lines. Uh, a break can be one page and or it can be uh, created using the slides. The slideshow section we will cover uh, a little bit later, but I'll continue on to show you how you can do that uh, instrumental break within the file itself as a separate page. Uh, we had a page with just the letter B, a space, and then K. We are now going to replace the B with a underscore. The space we're going to replace with an underscore. And the K we're going to replace with an underscore. Now we're going to join them. And we will get rid of the spaces. Okay. Now, in our settings, uh, styles, we have selections here of the default, the male, the female, and the other. And each one of these has their own particular uh, color swipes the text and the color swipe that goes with it. And um, 
as well they have their preset font we are going to create an what we will call a progress bar and you can create different styles for your projects let's select line 5 here double click this line and we're going to name it progress bar now what we're going to want to do is to have uh, the same basic settings as uh, let's say the default which is a white line and an outline of black and a, and a text wipe of red for this exercise we're going to select the progress bar I'm going to have a white line but we're going to change the main white line to a different color now to do that uh, we're going to choose a color in the palette and we're going to slightly adjust it and seeing as I'm preferential to green <laughs> we're going to s s get a a lighter shade of green that we will use there it is there now this will be the main bar and for the outline we are going to choose another color and we can change any one of these blacks let's change it to a lighter shade or a little darker green yet okay and that will be our outline and it will be wiped the same as our default it will be wiped in red okay so now we have our progress bar going back to the track and to the line and the page that we have our instrumental break we are now going to go to the style with that line selected click on the progress bar and as you can see there it is now to see how it shows up within the project we're going to click edit go into the edit module and we can see it showing up here we're going to want to have it uh, start page will start at this point here this is part of the fine tuning and we can have it showing to about this point now you'll see that the it's going to be showing for this period of time but the wiping ends here we're going to want to extend that wiping so we'll have to click the lyric sweep and select the wiping and we will extend that line we'll find a closer position to the end seeing as it's still selected all I need to do is click control key and hold down the to that point there there it is now it will be wiped almost to the same length as when it's showing now we're going to raise this up as well to that position whoops a little too far there now to see we'll just play this
Okay. Now, one thing we need to do, we need to uh, fix the size of this. So let's go back to our styles and find a proper uh, size for it. We're going to increase it dramatically. Still, we're comfortable with a size that we like. I'm going to max it out at 100. There you go. Okay. So, that's basically how it's going to show on the page. Let's go back to the edit module. Increase the size of our screen. And we'll do a playback. <laughs> got here is not what we wanted. We're going to okay somehow or other we change the size of our default and it should be 16. There we go. Let's double check that again. Okay, so there's our progress bar. Now, if you want, you can also insert text, which will indicate the length of the progress, the instrumental break. Uh, as an example, it starts at 3.04 of the song, and it runs till this point, which is... 328.2 so we'll get it right on the line so that is actually a 24 second instrumental break if you want you can insert text on that page to indicate that length let's do that to do that to add a a line we're going to type in 20 24 don't worry about the size we'll change that shortly 24 uh, second what we'll also do is we'll add in instrumental and we're going to put our forward slash and break those words up. Okay, let's split that. Now we need to create this as a separate line. So we'll split this as well. Now we'll split it as a line. Okay, so now we have a line of text and we have our split progress bar. Okay, between there. We have uh, now, we're going to split that into another line. Okay, now to set it to default, which picks up and then we're going to select these two and we're going to set them as fixed which means they will not be wiped. They will stay there as long as 24 seconds or as long as the page is shown as it's set. The progress bar, as you'll see, is way down here. So we got to fix that and all we need to do is change its position. For this exercise, I'm going to change it to minus 25 and there. 
Okay, now let's save this project to this point. We'll go back to the edit mode and just see how it all looks. I'm going down the Louisiana way. Okay, now here's the reason why it didn't show up. You see, it doesn't swipe until after this, and when we made the changes to that page, this is what will occur. It shifts everything below each line. So we have to make another correction here. We have to fix up the wiping time for that bar. Now this is the other method that you can use to lengthen or shorten. Okay, so you get the idea there. Uh, I'd like to position these two lines down a little bit more so they're a little bit more centered to the page. So I'll set it at about 48. Okay. And let's save it at this point. Okay, so the, this is one way by which you can um, create a progress bar, or an instrumental break bar. Uh, the other way is in the slideshow module where you would create a CDG slide that would you insert within your file. And uh, I'll return and show you how you work with the slideshow module. Welcome to part five of the Karaoke Builder Studio tutorial series. In uh, part five we are going to uh, show you how to make good use of your slideshow module. The slideshow module is used primarily for creating CDGs which you would use as inserts within your project. The CDGs can be used to create an introduction card which will show uh, an outro card which you can add to the end and where you have instrumental breaks as I showed you in part 4 how to create within the project a progress bar we're going to now show you how those that can also be created using a CDG in the slideshow to begin with we click the slideshow module button and uh, immediately will come up an existing basic template provided by Karaoke Builder Studio. Now you may have some graphics that you would prefer to use as in my case I do and I use it for my um, Dancing Frog Karaoke. Uh, so this Karaoke Builder Studio graphic that you see here can be changed. To change it, select that slide, select the image button, and browse to where you have your images. In my case, I have it stored under templates in a subfolder named graphics, and I have some pre-designed graphic material, pictures that I have been using. Uh, I will take as an example uh, this JPEG, the uh, program will allow a, made, a fairly decent variety of uh, f graphic file types. It's probably best to stay with the most commonly used ones, and that would be JPEGs, GIFs, BMPs. 
Also, you can use PNGs if you have that type of program to create them, or if that's the way that you got them. I'm going to choose this JPEG and click the Open button, and it now replaces what was there. The next step is your colors. Now, you can create your own slideshow colors, color palettes particularly, or you can import what you already have existing in your main project. For this exercise, we're going to choose what we already have in our project folder to maintain some consistency. Now, immediately you noticed that it changed on the right-hand side to what we have in our main lyrics module, the color palette. Now, you can edit these colors within this section as well. For now, we will just simply apply this custom palette to the selected slides. Now, the selected slides, you'll notice that I only select have one selected. You can select you can select all and then make that application apply. So now all slides that you have will reflect that color palette. If you have some graphics that need uh, a little improvement, you can use the dithered. If you uncheck dithered, you'll notice it breaks it up. Many graphics are susceptible to breaking up, so I would recommend you stay with it being dithered. Now with it all slides being selected, click the optimize and then click optimize all slides and many of your original colors will be maintained. Now the position of your graphics may be more than what you want. As you can see in this case, it has basically filled up the whole page. We are going to crop this so it immediately makes it smaller, but we don't want it dead center, at least not in this exercise. So I'm going to align it to the far right corner and crop it to the far right corner. Now, as you can see, it is now in an area which doesn't take up the whole card. The next step is you may want to add in some text. So you select the font button, select the font that you want to use of that as well. Bold or smooth the edges. I find the smooth edges is not always the best, so I'm going to uncheck it for this present time. Now to add actual text, have the font selected, and then here you'd see new, delete, and these other three are for positioning to the left, to the center, or to the right. There's other further adjustments you can make to your text once you have it set up. Let's start with our first line. We're going to click New and New Text pops up. To change this, you double click this area and then type in what you prefer to have in there. In my case, I'm going to use and I'm going to use it in caps Dancing Frog that's my first line of text. To create a second line of text, you simply click New again, and it will duplicate what you already have into a second line. You double click that, highlight it, and change it to what you prefer. Okay. Now, once again, you have a wide selection of fonts which may be installed on your system. I'm going to change the fonts for both of those lines to something that I prefer to use on a regular basis. I'm going to use the Baskerville. Now I can select all the lines and change those text to that font. Now I can adjust these lines to where I really want them. 
I can set it to the center, back to the left, or to the far right. These are the variables that you have that you can uh, play with. So that's, that's positioning the text, but we can further position the text by moving it down I'm going to move the first line down to about 10. So I have a nice break between the two lines. Then I may want to add more text, which I can do by simply clicking in New. Uh, for this exercise, I'm going to show you how you can create more than one uh, slide for uh, this particular slideshow CDG. I'm going to create a copy of what I've just previously made and I'm going to change this to presents. So now you'll see that as it moves through the dancing frog karaoke will change to presents. Another way to do that is to keep the dancing frog uh, karaoke in place. I will copy that and it will insert it right after the first one. And then I'm going to add in another line and I'll type in presents. There are so many variables here, it's hard to decide for each individual but as you can see there are so many things that you can do here to present what you want to have as a start card I call them. Now once you have everything in place you can change the colors or the fonts of each one of these lines for Dancing Frog as an example, I'm going to change the color to what I would prefer to have. And it's going to be this green. And I'm going to change Karaoke to the same green. Now I can do that with each of these lines by selecting all. What I do is I hold the first, hold my shift key down and select all three lines, letting my sh shift key go. Then I could go to the color palette, select the color I want, and there the second slide uh, represents properly. Now I'm going to delete this slide because what I want to do is make a copy of this one because I want to create some more text and in this case I'm going to do in the style of now I'm going to position this to 25 across but I'm going to position it to the left and I'm going to move it down to about 130 and then I'm going to recreate make a copy of this one and then I'm going to add another line of text. And here I'm going to add in the artist's name. All right. Now I want to make this in the style of a little smaller so I can change the font size to 12 and keeping the artist's 
size to 16. So here I have my first slide will show Dancing Frog Karaoke. Second one will show Dancing Frog Karaoke Presents and it will continue on. I want to make some finer adjustments to this. What I want to do is replace Presents with the song title. And I'm going to stay with caps. There. Now, if need be, I can adjust Louisiana line to uh, left or right, but in this instance, it just worked out, appears to be very well centered. I'm going to change the color of that line to something else. I'm going to make it a yellow. Now, I have to remember to do the same thing in the following slide. Or I can take a simple shortcut and I'm going to copy. Then I will get rid of this one here. And then I'll continue on adding in the artist's name as I had. Make this line the 12. I think you can see as I go along each slide, I'm adjusting it so that everything is consistent. And I'm going to change the name of the artist to the same color as the song title. Okay. So starting, you're going to have a blank. You cannot enter anything into this first page. It is a start. Uh, here is where you would begin your first page, your second page, your third page, your fourth page, and your fifth. Now, as you can see, it will progress. Now we're going to deal with timing. Each one of these slides can have its set time. And that refers to how long it will show. I'm going to keep this down to one second. I'm going to keep this down to one second. I'll keep this to one second. Same here. But I'm going to hold this a little longer. Now, as you can see, these, these lines are all consistent as they appear. Okay, so now we've got this far. Let's uh, save this and give it a name. Okay, George Strait down Louisiana way, but we're going to name it as intro. Okay, let's copy this because we'll need this again. Save it. Now we will build this CDG. Putting it in our working files. <coughs> now you can see that it is nine seconds and a little bit. Let's play it and see how it shows. Oh. 
Okay, it ran for that nine seconds. One final thing to do is we will select all the slides. We'll ensure that our custom palette is applied to all of them. Then we will optimize all slides. Then we will save it again. And we will build it again. And it will pop up, prompting you to play it. Now you notice that it goes from top to bottom. Okay. This special effects here allows us to change the way that it uh, trans transitions from one page to the next. Currently it's set at top to bottom. Let's try it a little different way. Let's go left to right. That gives you a quick view of it. We're going to save everything as left to right transition. Special effects. We're going to save this project again. Now we will build it again. And we're about the same time. Now notice how it comes across the screen from left to right. Okay, that is our slideshow intro. Let's exit the slideshow and now I'll show you how you insert it into the uh, project itself. Select the edit mode. Go to display remove. Let's double check our time here. How much time do we have? It appears that we have a good 14 seconds a good 14 seconds from the beginning to this point here. So we could actually increase the size of our slideshow intro by another five seconds. Let's do that. While we're in the edit module, we can also access the slideshow module. We will click that button. We will open our previously saved project for slideshow intro and there it is now we can increase the time length of each one of these let's add another second to this one we'll add two seconds to this one and we'll add one more second to the last one one second one second two seconds three seconds and four seconds now we'll save it again and we'll build it again. Now we have a little better than 13 seconds in total for this slideshow to play. Let's have a quick play. Left to right flashing. You can adjust your time for each one of those pages as you prefer. So we're going to exit here. Go back to our edit module. Now let's go right to the beginning of our file. And we'll enter it in at about this position. Gives it a little bit of clearing time when the file actually starts. We're going to add our created CDG, our intro CDG. There, now we have some time between the end of the CDG and the beginning of our first line. I do not recommend going any closer than uh, 0.5, which would be about this position here, between the end of your CDG and the beginning of your next page. Especially with CDGs inserted this way, it's best not to 
have your lines and your first, in other words, your first page and your intro the CDG being much closer than that. Let's save this project to this point. Okay, now you will not be able to play this back to see how it appears as a file. What we will need to do is to create a bin file of this project as we have it so far just to see how the whole thing comes together. So we will go to the top left corner click build the karaoke track build bin file and we will create a folder known as bins into which you can save it. Playing it back. you get an idea as to how the CDG intro and when inserted into your file how it comes all together when you create your bin file <coughs> excuse me now we do know that we have a section here which is an instrumental break so let's move on to that instrumental break and we're going to create another CDG for this our break will start at about 3.04. As you can see down here, this is the position we're at, 3.04 seconds of the file. We're going to go to about this position here. So what we're looking at is a CDG file, which is going to be about 23 seconds in length so we will go back to this position now open up the slideshow module again we're going to create a slideshow uh, CDG to um, reflect the break we don't need to have the graphics in here so we will delete the image only we will import select all slides we will import the lyrics palette and we will have it applied to all and now let's create our text lines we need new and we're going to type in here instrumental double click we'll position this in the center and bring it down to about this position. Now we'll create a new line. Double click this. 23 seconds. We'll give it some space. There we have that. Now, we may or may not want to have this in the white color. We can change our line colors. To something that shows up nicely. We'll have it set like that. Now, this slide, because it is supposed to be set for 23 seconds playtime, 
we will now collect select all we will click slides and there is a feature you can either select the viewing time here in this section or set your fixed length the default is 10 seconds we are going to type in here 23 now let's save what we have but before we do that let's check the effect let's instead of going top to bottom we'll do as we did with our intro card and we're going to go again left to right save it and change the name to let's just call it a break okay build save it little quick play now you notice that the text stays on the screen for the duration of the slideshow there we go 23 seconds exactly let's exit now we will add that instrumental break and we can see where it ends lots of clearance time we'll tighten this up a little bit now save this project again and let's build the bin file again this will overwrite what we have already done and we'll do a quick playback We can stop and pause the play as we prefer we can also advance it by clicking this advance forward button either by 10 seconds or by 60 we're just going to quickly do it 60. seen the transition uh, from one page to the break and then back to the uh, lyrics of the song okay now you can do the same thing with an outro at the end of the file by creating a slideshow for that you'll notice that it the position we're at here is four minutes four seconds you have four minutes and 16 to the end actually pretty close to 17 seconds so you could create a outro slideshow CDG to insert at this position and have it running uh, and timed for uh, about 12 seconds and it'll take it to the end of the file that's the slideshow section and uh, thank you for joining me hopefully you found this quite helpful 
Welcome back to Karaoke Builder Studio Tutorials. This is tutorial number six, the finishing. Uh, in our previous five tutorials, we have covered the basic importing of the lyrics, the music file, and the syncing. We have uh, covered in the tutorial two, the fine tuning, and in tutorial three, uh, we have uh, refined it even further. In tutorial five, uh, four and five, we covered the various progress bars, and in uh, particularly in tutorial five, we covered the slideshow creation. Now we're going to put it all together and put in our finishing touches. There are, as I mentioned, two ways in which you can insert an introduction uh, CDG and an outro uh, CDG to your karaoke file. Depending on what your preference is and again uh, how much room you may have within your file, you may prefer to put it in the settings module where you'll see an intro insertion and an outro insertion. This is where you have put your intro CDG and your outro CDG within your project and it will um, create it in a bin file uh, with those right at the very start and at the very end. For this exercise let's collect the intro which we created in our first uh, slideshow tutorial. Uh, in that tutorial we had not created the outro so let's just quickly do that just to recover how to create uh, slideshows CDGs. We'll click the slides we will open a project. Uh, I have pre-made one here for outro which is 10 seconds in length which is the same basic length as the intro. Uh, I'm going to cover inserting the image. Let's just insert the image that we want. We have positioned it uh, resized to fit. With our intro we had cropped it to this position. But because of the size of the photo, you'll see it does not crop. So we'll have to fit it. And it's a very large size graphic. So if you run into this problem, you will have to recreate your graphics or resize them so that they will fit a smaller area, such as the dancing frog one in our intro. For now, though, we will leave it as fit, aligned to the bottom right and cropped to the bottom right. Uh, we'll do the same thing with this graphic in this slide and with this graphic in this slide. Now you'll notice that I have set times. The viewing time of each one is set. This here is one second. This is 0.125 of a second and your seconds are broken up into 300 um, points. So I've chosen uh, 0.125 for the first one. The second one will run a full two seconds for viewing and the third one will run a full two seconds of viewing time. Uh, I have set it left to right for each one. That's your left to right settings. Okay. Now we will optimize it all and we will save it to as an outro slide. Now we will create it, build it, outro slide and you can view it. You'll see that the time length is 10.179 seconds which should be sufficient for our project. 
You can adjust those times upwards or downwards as you prefer for each uh, slide page if you want to get to the exact 10 seconds. And you could do that in here. Reduce this to one and then uh, adjust this a little bit. Say, uh, uh, so let's set this to 175. Okay, optimize all slides. Save it again. Okay, yes, we're going to build it again. Whoops, there we go. And this gives us just about 10 seconds right on the money. If you want to get a little closer to the actual time, then reduce this to, let's see. Let's do 105. Some of this takes a little playing around. Okay, that's all. Let's save this. Okay. Build it. just a little bit shy of 10 seconds, which is fine. Okay. There we have our extra card. Now we can exit out of the slideshow. Now let's insert that intro, outro into our outro in the settings module. Now, uh, what we can do uh, is go into the edit mode, and we know we have an instrumental break so that we have created a card for. So let's go to that instrumental break position, which is about here. There it is there. And we will add in the instrumental break that we had created earlier. We'll insert that within the actual project itself. There we go. Now let's save this. Save it as this one here. Uh, let's save it here as with intro and extra. That means that it's the intro and the extra is outside of the actual project. Okay, there we go. Now let's build this. We'll build this using the same name. Well, okay, save this. Now it will play for us. We have just created our bin file. There's your intro card, intro CDG showing. And it will change to the actual project now. Now this black space is due to the fact that our lyrics, <coughs> pardon me, our lyrics don't start till this point in our file as you can see, which is about 14.76 seconds in. So that's why you're going to see a black screen from the beginning to this point. Let's continue. choose the right audio file. One second here. Let's go back and let's choose the one with the vocals. Uh, there we are with vocals. We're going to save this again as with vocals intro and extra. Okay. Now let's build our bin file again using the right with vocals.
Okay, I'm pausing this because uh, you can see that your intro uh, CDG showed up in your file and uh, you had some black sp space there because of the introduction music before the first lyric page showed. Uh, that is one of the disadvantages of using the intro and outro module in the settings uh, because it will not uh, overlap the actual project music. So if you have sufficient room in your project to insert your intro or outro and or outro file CDG, then I suggest you consider doing so. Or you can use as we showed you with the progress bar in tutorial number four, uh, creating a progress bar for an intro and an outro. There are so many flexibilities uh, and choices. Uh, however, the simplest thing is to do is to uh, at the start, just use your introduction CDG and your uh, outro uh, CDG within your file. And I'll show you how we insert that after this uh, if we play this back and see how it all shows up at this present time. I've paused this in the um, bin player uh, for Karaoke Builder. You can advance it forward or back by 10 seconds or by 60 seconds. So you can do a quick view and edit at the same time. I'm in other words, you can move it back or for, uh, forth at different positions of the file and just see how uh, everything is working. instrumental uh, break for 23 seconds. shows up at the very end of it. Okay, so that's one way to do this. Let's go and do it the other way. We are going to delete the intro and outro from the settings module and we're going to have it inserted within the actual project itself. So go to the intro, right click, select all, right click again and delete it. Go to the 
the outro, left click, select all, right click, and delete it. Now it's out of that module. Now we will go into the edit mode and we will position it within the actual file itself. So let's go to the very beginning. We will set it here. I recommend you give it four or five of these little digits here. You see you got one, two, three, four, five. This is the point that it will be inserted and start to show and play. Now let's add in our intro. Here is our intro CDG. We're going to add it to the file. And we have one, two, three, four, Let's give it five before the actual next page lyrics begin to show. We will select the last line, hit our shift button, click it one more time with our left. Then we will move the show to the red line. That should give us enough room. Now we already have our instrumental break inserted into the file. So now what we want to do is insert our outro CDG into, there's our break. We'll go to near the end. Now here we have 4.3 is the position we are at according to this red line. And we have 4.16 seconds uh, remaining, I mean, of the total file. So that means there's a difference of 13 seconds, almost 14 seconds to the end of the file. So let's just take it to, uh, we'll take away the 10 seconds that we're going to need for the outro CDG, because that's what we created it as is a 10 second outro CDG. So we'll just move this red line to, um, let's see here, <laughs> my uh, calculator isn't working. Okay, so take it to the six, four, five, six. There we are, which gives us 10 seconds we're going to need and probably a little bit. Now at this point we will add in the outro CDG that we had just created. We still have a bit of room here so we can advance it a little further down to the end of the actual project leaving it about four or five digits before the actual end. Now we will extend the show of the last line to about see here one two three four five giving it sufficient time to clear so it won't garble up the outro or the lyrics so there we are we have it positioned to there now let's save this but we're going to save it because we don't have the intro and outro uh, outside of the file we have it inside so we're going to save it as this file name here George Strait with vocals down Louisiana way so let's save this. okay now we will build this bin file with that name okay save it and let's play it itself. You want to 
to see that again. Well, there's there it is by going back a bit. Let's see it transitions nice and clean. If you have your uh, first page too tight to your intro, it will most likely garble up your first lyrics uh, page. So always give it about that four or five to be on the safe side, five ditches between. Let's advance this. Okay, we want to see how our intro works. Our, I mean our, our break. I'm going down the Louisiana way. transition going from the break CDG back into the lyrics. Let's advance this a little closer to the end. Here we go. that saved uh, created now here's the finishing touches how do we separate the CDG and the music well we go to the tool box here and we will extract from the bin and we want to extract the CDG and the wave file so let's browse clicking on bin to the bin file we want to extract that's the one there with the intro and outro contained within the project itself. So we're going to extract the CDG from that bin file. So clicking CDG, we're going to save the CDG. I prefer to save it within the bin files. So there it is, it's properly named. Okay, I'll save that into the bins folder, and I'm going to save the wave into the same bins folder for this project. There we go. Now click on the build, and what it does is it extracts the CDG and the wave separately. And just so that you believe me, we'll go into the bins folder. And there's the CDG and there's the wave. And with the uh, karaoke players that you uh, have installed, it should play. I have uh, installed WinApp with the CDG plugin. So I'm just going to double click the wave file and have it open up into WinApp and you'll see. <laughs> somewhat out of sync because with WAMP when you advance it like I just did it's going to throw the lyrics and the music out of sync when it plays so don't get nervous that was me that wasn't you or anything wrong with the file it's just the way that WAMP works there are uh, other karaoke players that you can advance it uh, 
within that program and it won't take it out of sync. But anyways, just to show you that you now have your two separated uh, CDG and music wave files. Now some people uh, find that the wave files are far too large in size, which is in this case correct because it's 43.2 megabytes for a wave file. Uh, with a uh, audio file converter, you can convert the wave back into a MP3 file. Let's do that. I'm going to use Gold Wave for this tutorial. Uh, just about every audio uh, editing program uh, has the conversion features to convert from one file format to another. So I'm going to now save this as, select it as saved MP3. And I'm going to leave it at the 128. And I'm going to save it again to the bins file of our project. Okay. It will not overwrite the WAV file because this is a different uh, sound format. Going through the conversion process now. Uh, what an MP3 audio format is, is a compressed version of your audio files, and in this case, it's a compressed version of the WAV file. Okay, we can close this now. And there we have both the MP3, which is, as you can see, considerably smaller. It's 3.92 megabytes versus the 43.2 megabytes. And if you want to save space on a hard drive, it's probably a good idea to save it as an MP3. Now it will play the same as, as if it was a WAV file in, in your karaoke players. <laughs> want to, uh, you can save them into zip files and uh, whatever you do, a couple of pointers here. Make sure that both files, the MP3 and the CDG, are named exactly the same with the exception of the extension, which in this case for here it's point .CDG and in the matching file it's a point .MP3. Everything else before the point here has to be exactly the same. Same spelling, same spacing, uh, same uh, naming format. Then you can create that and put them into a zip file and name it exactly the same as the main files inside, with the exception of having the uh, extension. Okay, there you have now a completed uh, karaoke file with the vocals. Now providing that your uh, files are exactly the same in length and tempo and pitch, then all you need to do is simply swap your vocal file with one that has no vocals. Or in this case I have just a matching uh, WAV file with backup vocals. Well, let's uh, open this up. We'll open that into and we have replaced the with vocals. We will now save this as with backup. Uh, there, I've saved it previously. We'll save this as with backup which means that everything is exactly the same except for your audio file. So we will now build this as with backup. Okay. Save this. Yes. And here is the same 
karaoke file in a bin, but it's without the lead vocals. synchronized so now you have a synchronized uh, karaoke file of the same song with just backup vocals now if you happen to also have one without any vocals at all as I have lucky me you simply replace that with that audio file save it as that without any backup or any vocals okay there we go we'll save this now we will build that without any vocals or backup this is the straight instrumental version save the bin file and it will backup vocals but there are no vocals at all in this entire track okay so there we have we've created we finished our project uh, and we've created our with vocals track our with backup vocals track and our uh, strict instrumental track now we can also ex do the same thing by going back to the tools and we can extract the CDG and the wave for each one we will select as an example with backup let's copy this because we'll need this for naming copy open save the CDG back into your bin file and make sure it's properly named this one is with backup and this is the CDG file save it wave file back to the bin files paste it as is the wave file with backup vocals save it then simply click build this file now and it's done you can do the same thing now with the straight instrumental one okay Open, CDG, straight instrumental, save that, Let's save it, wave file, straight instrumental, save it, now we build it, and there, it has extracted <coughs> all your files. So we have extracted the bin files for all three, with vocals, with backup and straight instrumental. And that concludes this portion of finalizing uh, Karaoke Builder Studio tutorial, finalizing your project. I'll uh, be back again with another tutorial with a few other minor tips and tricks. Okay, I wish you good luck and uh, have fun most of all.